Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, digital transformation champions, and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke, and this podcast is brought to you by Digital Training Institute. Be sure to subscribe to JSB Talks Digital. You'll find us on iTunes or Spotify. I promise you the 20 minutes you invest each week with me for free will take your digital and social media knowledge to new levels. In this episode, number 97, I discuss the power of LinkedIn for B2B results. Coming up in today's show, in social media news, new QR code for Facebook business pages, LinkedIn helps you connect with people nearby, and the rise of the smart speaker. I interview Melanie Dodaro, LinkedIn influencer and two-time author about the ins and outs of LinkedIn for B2B results. In shoutouts, three LinkedIn hacks, Ask JSB. In JSB's column, why I decided to use LinkedIn for my B2B sales and find out what LinkedIn tool saved my working week. Social media news. If you tuned into last week's episode of the podcast, you would have heard me discuss name tags on Instagram. Now, if you haven't heard it yet, make sure you tune in. Well, it seems the rise of the QR codes continues with Facebook rolling out scannable codes for pages. Matt Navarra spotted it and tweeted some images which I've included in the blog post associated with this podcast. The new codes allow page managers to create a range of scannable QR images for their page in various formats. Page managers can choose a code that automatically likes the page on the user's behalf, checks into your business location, connects to a recommendation screen for the page, connects to your view offers listing, or connects to review a page. So there you have it, QR codes for Facebook business pages. When you're attending large business events, do you wonder who's there and who you'd like to meet? Often event organizers don't provide a list in advance and any good networker worth his or her salt will realize it's the people you meet which can really provide the ROI on attending any event. Well, LinkedIn have just announced a new feature that you might be interested in. They are attempting to help us connect with people who are nearby at events. Find Nearby uses our device's Bluetooth to scan the people around us. This requires all users to activate the feature to be discoverable. Once activated, we can choose to let people nearby discover us for the next one to three days or forever. And it also means weekdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So what do you think? Would this complement your networking plan? Don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn to continue this conversation. Google Home or Amazon Echo. Do you have a smart speaker yet? A new study in the US reports that 20% of households with Wi-Fi have a smart speaker. While we don't have Irish stats to hand, we do know this trend is only going one way because my friends, welcome to the age of assistance where voice plays a big role. According to the report authors Comscore, One key reason for the rise is lower price points. Smart speakers tend to over-index in high-income homes, but lower-income households have continued to gain ground. And with the peer pressure that Bobby B is currently putting on me, I may soon own a Google Home device. Interview In this episode, I interview Melanie Dodaro, the founder of Top Dog Social Media 
and a leading expert on LinkedIn and social selling. Melanie is the author of two books, including the number one Amazon bestseller, The LinkedIn Code, and her brand new book, LinkedIn Unlocked, which is out now. Melanie has trained over 27,000 businesses and individuals and appears on countless lists as a top sales and marketing influencer. In this interview, we discuss the power of LinkedIn for B2B social selling. JSB Talks Digital. 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 In today's JSB Talks Digital, I'm joined by the wonderful Melanie Didaro, two-time author and founder of Top Dog Social Media. Melanie, you're very welcome to the podcast and the blog. Thank you so much. It's great to be here, Joanne. So you are beaming in from Spain at the moment. I am in Spain at the moment, yes. On my way to Amsterdam soon. Fantastic. Now, Melanie, I hope you don't mind me saying, but you've been around the social media circuit for a long time. And I <laughs> Are you making me sound old now? <laughs> no, I say this to you because, I mean, I've been following um, your work, obviously, and learning from it but also um, how you've evolved your business, your progression. Um, I saw you speak in San Diego a number of years ago and got to meet you in person also. But let's tell our viewers and listeners, um, what's a bit of your backstory and how did you get to become the global expert in LinkedIn? Oh my goodness, that's a long one. How much time do we have? (laughs) What do we need? Okay. (laughs) Well, uh, you know, my journey in social media started uh, quite by accident. Uh, I'm actually a really super private person. And so when social media came out, uh, I was not at all interested in being involved in it. In fact, my mother was on social media before I was. And my family, I lived in Canada at the time. I now live in Europe, which I'm so excited about. (laughs) But my family all lived on the other side of the country. And anyone who knows Canada knows it's a pretty darn big country. And so they kept bugging me and telling me to get on Facebook. And I'm like, well, what is this stupid Facebook? And why would I want to be on it? (laughs) Anyway, eventually I decided to join. And I would only allow my my family members and, and a couple of really close friends to be my Facebook friends. I had like every single privacy setting and strangers would send me connection requests. And I'm thinking, why are these strangers trying to connect with me? And of course I'd say no. Um, But quickly, uh, you know, as I started to use it, I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a business application here. And so I'm a longtime entrepreneur. I owned many businesses prior to that. And so I always look at everything from a business perspective. And so I was very intrigued by this and it sent me on a mission to learn everything that I could about social media and and digital marketing. And so for literally three years, I became a full-time student going to courses and attending seminars and workshops and reading books and traveling all around North America uh, to learn and hiring coaches and and whatnot. And so like a lot of it I learned by, you know, trial and error in the early days because nobody really knew how to use it. This is going back in 2007 and nobody understood how to use it from a business perspective. So, uh, you know, years later, I got pretty good at it and started having businesses reach out and ask me for help, which I absolutely loved doing. And, uh, you know, as a, as a business owner myself and, and a longtime entrepreneur, I really, you know, have a fondness for an entrepreneurial spirit and helping businesses. I believe that our economy and the world is really built on small business. So it was my, my honor and my pleasure to help these businesses. And, and I realized that starting a business to help more people like that would just be a great idea. And so that's how my company, Top Dog Social Media, evolved. And then, you know, a year into it, I started realizing that, you know, LinkedIn was really my preferred platform for myself and the clients that I was working with. And so I started talking a lot more about LinkedIn, even though I was a little reluctant at first because my company is called Top Dog Social Media, not Top Dog LinkedIn. And so uh, I did realize at the same time that a lot of the traffic that would come to my website would come every time I published an article on LinkedIn. So I started writing and speaking about it a lot more. And that transitioned into me becoming a very well-known LinkedIn expert or LinkedIn authority and led to my first book, which I published in 2014 called The LinkedIn Code and my brand new book that I just launched, uh, which is LinkedIn Unlocked. 
And let's talk about social media before we dive into LinkedIn. Over the past 11 years, it has evolved. And in actual fact, it is unrecognizable from those days in 2007, which is the same year that I also took an interest. How do you think it has evolved for the better? And let's keep it business because I love those business conversations too. How has it evolved to better business? You know, it really depends on how you use it because you're going to hear a lot of people that are going to criticize it and say, you know, for example, with Facebook, my goodness, you know, my Facebook reach is down to 2%. And, you know, there's a lot of expectations that people have that they should have marketing available to them for free, which I, I quite don't quite understand because prior to getting into the digital marketing space, I owned brick and mortar businesses and I spent $800,000 a year on advertising, TV, radio, and newspaper. I spent a lot of money, but I made a lot of money. And it's kind of mind boggling to me to, that anybody would expect a tool or a marketing tool uh, to be available to them for free. And so, you know, although Facebook's not my preferred social network, uh, you know, I see, I see, you know, potential in it for many businesses. Uh, it, why should they do anything for free for a business? You know, that's part of the, the thing that doesn't quite make sense to me. So, you know, having a, an advertising budget to supplement that is important, but LinkedIn's different. So with LinkedIn, every single thing that I teach is actually for free. They don't need to spend money on ads. And in fact, you know, LinkedIn ads are, are quite expensive and often I don't recommend them. So, um, you know, the only thing that I would recommend in a lot of cases, and this depends on how somebody is using it. So LinkedIn's a powerful tool for B2B. It's a powerful tool for lead generation. And if you're going to get really serious at it, you want to consider maybe investing in Sales Navigator, which will make the entire process much easier for you, as well as allow you to be much more organized in your processes. So, you know, social selling is, is uh, you know, the primary way to utilize social media to generate new leads and clients. And LinkedIn is the absolute premier platform for that when it comes to anything B2B. So LinkedIn for a long time was known as the social network of recruitment, but it's so much more than that. And yes. I was using it actively for about 18 months and I'm hanging out there every day. And like you said, getting results organically. Let's explain to the JSB Talks digital audience about the power of LinkedIn before they buy and read your book, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible uh, tool in terms of achieving a number of different things. One, it's a great place to build your authority, your credibility, and start to build trust with a, a network of, of people that you've connected with. And you want to continue to grow that network with people that are potential prospects for you. So, you know, that's content sharing. And a lot of people that teach social selling, which of course is what I do, uh, talk a lot about content. And of course, you know, there's no question that content is absolutely essential. But the way that most people talk about it, they act like that's what it is. It's about sharing content and sharing value and sharing your knowledge. And that's all well and good, but it's actually not going to generate the kind of results that you want. What will is a direct outreach to your ideal clients, to those specific prospects that you've been able to target through LinkedIn with their powerful advanced search, uh, you know, narrowing it down by industry, by geography, by title, by company size. There's so many different criteria that you can use. And so having a direct outreach to those people and uh, you know, a relationship building process that follows to ultimately earn the right to move the conversation offline because business in the B2B world still happens offline. And too many people, you know, make, well, everybody, most people that are using LinkedIn will make two mistakes. Either they'll rush into, you know, pitch somebody as soon as they've connected with somebody, or they'll never have a conversation and move that conversation, you know, offline where they can actually get to know somebody, get to know the problems that they have and see if they've got a solution that's going to fit that. And so, you know, everybody's kind of caught in one of those two things or they do nothing at all. <laughs> you know, uh, that happens as well. And, you know, it's funny because in order to use any tool, 
you really need to educate yourself on how to do it from best practices to appropriate etiquette to the things that are going to work. And uh, I posted something earlier today on LinkedIn about that, you know, of all the connection requests that I get, I actually did an analysis. I have 795 connection requests pending right now because I just got an influx of so many and I haven't had the time to review them. But I went through them quickly to see how many were personalized. Of that 795, only 21 were personalized. That's 2.6%. The difference between personalizing the connection request and not is the difference between people accepting it. I had one guy on the post who said, you know, well, I disagree with you. I send them all the time and, you know, 30% of the people accept. I think that it's a waste of time to personalize. And so, you know, I had to respond and say, okay, so let me understand this. You think that it's a waste of time to send out connection requests and personalize them, but only 30% of the people that are, are accepting your connection requests. Well, let me tell you, the people that, that personalize a connection request to me, and this is you know, just at the basic level of, of best practices and etiquette, the people that personalize a connection request to me, 99% of the time I'm going to accept them. There's some exceptions. If they don't have a profile picture, I'm not sure, you know, who they are. Maybe they come from a country where there's, you know, a, 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 a lot of, you know, spam or, or uh, fake profiles that, you know, I've kind of become aware of. And then in addition to that, 100% of the connection requests that I send are personalized and 100% are accepted. So, you know, this guy is trying to challenge me on this saying, well, you know, I think it's a waste of time, only 30%, you know, 30% accept mine. So how much time are you wasting if only 30% are accepting? And it's also saying that I actually disregard the potential relationship that we could have because you don't deserve a personalized note. Well, and you know what? I didn't bother to ask him how he's using the platform because for me, it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter how, you know, why do you want to connect with somebody if you're not going to try to develop any kind of relationship or, uh, you know, if there isn't some kind of value uh, in terms of a win-win situation in having each other in their network. So it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but, uh, you know, to each their own. <laughs> I, I can assure you he's probably not generating any business from LinkedIn. So do you think that we, there's still a large body of people who are completely obsessed with vanity metrics and their objective and their measure of success is simply down to number of connections? You know, uh, yes. And actually, I wrote an article about this recently. It was uh, the LinkedIn uh, SSI score, which is the Social Selling Index. So it's um, a way that LinkedIn will tell you based on, you know, the, the actions that you take. So, you know, engaging with people, connecting, growing your network, you know, various things, aspects come into play for this SSI, net, uh, SSI score, social selling index score. And, you know, it is a bit of a vanity metric. There's no question about it, but activity and visibility do usually equal profitability, profitability, you know? So there is some things that come into play with that. And then of course there's others that don't. At the end of the day, if you're just collecting connections and you're not ever building relationships, it is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, a vanity metric. Let's talk about then your second book, which is just out, hot off the shelves. And I, was fortunate enough to have a little bit of a preview. So thank you for that. What can people expect from LinkedIn Unlocked? You know, it's a complete blueprint to how to use LinkedIn. So it helps you to understand everything from, you know, start to finish, basically. Understanding how people are, um, you know, really kind of taking in information and, and how businesses and individuals are searching for the solutions to their problems now and it's very different than how they used to you know in the past people might have opened up a yellow pages to look for a service provider for something now they're doing research online and you want to be part of that research you want them to discover you in that buyer's journey and so you know in order to do that you really need to know who your ideal clients are the specific problems that they have 
And then you need to have a LinkedIn profile that really speaks to that, that of course positions your credibility and your authority on your topic, but really more so is client focused and is compelling to them in terms of how you can help them solve the problems that they have. And then of course I talk about LinkedIn uh, best practices and etiquette, and then the, the, the juicy part, the most important part, which is how to find leads and prospects on LinkedIn. And once you've found them, exactly what to do to connect with them and to move that conversation forward, start to establish some rapport, start to build a relationship, and earn enough trust to be able to, to comfortably move that conversation offline, where they're willing to actually move that conversation offline. Again, so many people go into the pitch turn people off right in the beginning and they never get there. And so, you know, there's a number of things that are important along the way and that's, you know, elevating your authority, your credibility and your trust. And this does come into play with, you know, content and engaging with people. Uh, and the biggest thing I think of all is to really have what I call like a social selling playbook. So you want to have a list of specific activities that you do on a daily and weekly basis. And these are the activities that are going to be the highest leveraging. So, you know, there's a ton of things that I could tell people to do on social media or even on LinkedIn, and many of them aren't going to generate results for them. Sometimes if you're a large brand or company, you need to do those things, whether or not they generate, a, you know, a, an increase in your bottom line. But for small businesses, they've got limited time. So I really focus on what are the things that you can do to add more business, to add a predictable stream of leads and clients into your business month after month. And those are the things that I focus on. So again, I've been fortunate enough to work with you and you provided me with a blueprint um, to help me in my new direction in my business. And I, I expect that the book is going to emulate your practical approach in business and how you deal on a one-to-one -one basis with clients. Is this essentially a how-to guide? It absolutely is. Yeah, there's no question about it. It takes you through all the different aspects of you know, what you need to know on LinkedIn to be successful, to you know, turn it into a tool that can provide ongoing leads. So when it comes to Facebook, we have our, our business page, we have our personal profile. On LinkedIn, we have our personal profile and a company page. What are your views around you know, driving the company page versus driving the personal brand of you for leads? That's a great question, Joanne. And there's never a time when that question doesn't get asked. <laughs> so, you know, if you're going to run ads on LinkedIn, you absolutely need to have a company page. Uh, if you've got a business, you should have a company page because otherwise, you know, on your profile, you'll have that little gray box next to the experience section instead of the logo. Because if you've got a company page, it'll connect directly to that page and it'll display your logo. So it looks more professional. But at the end of the day, People deal with people. People connect with people, not logos. And so company pages rarely get any traction unless they're spending money on sponsored posts, unless they're doing some advertising. And at the end of the day, you know, business happens no matter who you're selling to, whether it's a small business or a large business, you're always selling to a person. And so it's that one-on-one -on -one connection, those one-on-one -on -one relationships, that person-to-person -person that you can do with a LinkedIn profile and that's where the magic is. So little action happens on the company page. And in fact, you know, I'm almost embarrassed by my company page. If you go take a look at it, probably the last time I posted on it was a month ago. I'm very inconsistent with it because it doesn't serve me. And at the end of the day, I'm just so laser focused on what produces results. And anything that doesn't, it just doesn't warrant my time. At the outset of the interview, you mentioned that when LinkedIn sparked your interest, it was because that the articles that you published or the discoverability on the search engines um, all started on LinkedIn by publishing your articles there. So what advice would you give to us that are creating content, we're publishing on our own website? Where does LinkedIn play a role in publishing articles? How do we go about it? Yeah, that's a great question. In fact, um, just to uh, elaborate on that, I actually didn't publish articles back then on LinkedIn on LinkedIn, the platform, I pu published them on my blog because LinkedIn Publisher didn't exist back then. That's come along since then. And it was just through publishing on my blog that I watched my Google Analytics 
major spikes when I wrote about LinkedIn versus when I wrote about other topics. So, but LinkedIn now offers, you know, a publishing platform where you can share content on it. And it's a wonderful opportunity to share it because it lives right in your profile. And if somebody's interested in learning more about you, they can actually go right into your articles and start to read some of your, your content. But here's the best part about LinkedIn Publisher is you can share the content on your own blog and then you can repurpose it on LinkedIn Publisher. And LinkedIn Publisher, the articles that you publish there get indexed by Google. And LinkedIn's website is by far more powerful than yours, by far more powerful than mine. It's one of the top ranking websites on the planet and it gets ex extremely uh, powerful Google indexing because of that. So you could publish the same article on LinkedIn as you do on your blog posts and yet if you've optimized it properly, that article could show up in the top of the search results in Google. Let's talk about video because who's not talking about video when it comes to social? And I think we were all very excited when LinkedIn introduced native video to the platform this year. And yes. um, how do you think people are doing with it? Are they doing well? Um, are the standards good enough? What's your own expectation of what you'd like to see on LinkedIn from users? Yeah, I mean, there's a tremendous opportunity right now with LinkedIn native video. Think back to, you know, when Facebook native video started and how powerful that was. Uh, it, that's exactly where LinkedIn is right now. So, you know, anybody who's, you know, got a B2B type of product or service, uh, it's going to be ideal for that. It's, uh, you're, you know, you're right in the beginning stages of having LinkedIn video. And so not a lot of people are publishing it. I'm seeing some people just do a phenomenal job at it get amazing engagement and interaction and grow uh, a, a large following very quickly through sharing video. The key with video on LinkedIn, let's keep it short and to the point. I saw one of my friends, he's a well-known influencer. Uh, I was just scrolling through LinkedIn earlier today and I saw she had posted a video on LinkedIn yesterday and it was 10 minutes long. She had two likes on it. I see this other girl that I know that posts videos on a regular basis. Hers are about one to two minutes and she's got hundreds and hundreds of likes and comments on a daily basis on her videos. So, you know, shorter is better with LinkedIn because they're not going to sit and listen to a 10 minute video, especially if they don't know you. If they know you and already love you, then, then that's great. But here's the thing. When your first level, your first degree network, so these are the people that you're directly connected to on LinkedIn. When they engage with your content, their connections can see it, which means your second level network can see it. So every single time somebody's engaging with your content, you are exponentially increasing your reach and that ability to get that message out to other people. So keeping in mind that many of the people that are going to be seeing your video don't know you right now. And if they don't know you, chances are if they see a video is 10 minutes, they're not going to pay attention to it. The other thing that I'd add is the videos, just like in Facebook, you know, as you're scrolling through the news feed, they're, they're, they're auto playing without sound. And so one of the things that you want to do is you want to caption your videos and make sure that you've got some text at the bottom so people can read a few, you know, a few uh, seconds of it, 10 seconds of it, so that they can decide do they want to hit that play and, and uh, have the audio. What about the accusation that some people have been make, making recently that LinkedIn is turning into Facebook with the level of personal content that people are sharing? And, you know, it's B2B, it's professional, and there's no place for any personalization and there should be a line drawn. What are your thoughts, Melanie? Yeah, so I, I kind of stand in that line. I think that, you know, LinkedIn's a professional network. Keep it professional. Having said that, you know, there's a lot of ways to incorporate something personal in a professional way, you know, whether it's by sharing a story or, you know, making it more professional. You know, it's certainly not a place to be posting any pictures of your family or 
of your pets or memes of, you know, cats and dogs and stuff like that. And, you know, people that do that uh, will quickly find that they're, not, you know, not getting a lot of traction. So definitely keep it professional. There's no need. That's what Facebook's for. You know, that's what Instagram's for. We've got those platforms to do those things. Uh, keep LinkedIn professional. This is your professional presence. This is your professional brand. So keep it professional. And that doesn't mean, I don't mean to say don't ever post anything personal in nature. It just depends on the context. And I think you kind of, you know, where, what I mean by that, don't you, Joanne? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think instinctively we all know that, but sometimes we just need to hear it from somebody else to remind us. Yeah. So Melanie, you've been kind of, you know, locked in. Um, in preparation for... <laughs> I have been locked in with LinkedIn Unlocked. <laughs> it's been a massive task. Share with us some of the reality of writing, um, launching, and promoting a book. It is a lot of work. Oh, my goodness. You know, when I wrote my last book in 2014, I said, I will never ever write a book again because <laughs> it's so much work it takes so much energy and time and literally you know i haven't been able to take on any new clients for the last month so any anything that's coming to me i'm like you know i'm sorry this month i'm not available uh, because it just consumes so much energy and you know there's a lot of people out there that have the desire to write a book and and you know i think it's a fabulous thing to do it's great it's an ability the ability to share your knowledge with people at such a low price and this is one of the reasons i was inspired to write a book in the first place you know not everybody can afford to work with me one on one and uh, you know afford my done for you services uh, so you know this gives me the opportunity to help people in the, uh, the masses so a lot more people and share that message so it it's, you know it inc provides incredible um, it, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling to be able to produce something like that and be able to share that and help so many people. But there is a lot of work. And so for those who, you know, aren't willing to do all the work, if you're not going to, you know, spend as much time marketing your book, creating all the marketing as you do writing the book, nobody's going to get the chance to read it. And so, you know, everybody thinks, oh, okay, you know, writing a book, once I've got that, I'm just going to publish it. Well, there's a lot more that goes into it. And so, you know, I've been creating, you know, hundreds of graphics for it and infographics and blog posts uh, for, you know, friends of mine that are social media influencers to post on their blogs and doing interviews like this one and many others and videos. And, you know, there's just a lot of moving pieces, web pages. And I, I created a whole bunch of bonuses for the book launch, which are still available, of course. And so, you know, these are all a lot of work to make it, uh, to make it successful. You know what, if, if my listeners and I'm including myself in this, you know, don't invest in anything else this year, then I would say invest in this book, explore LinkedIn, explore its potential. We're all in business, we're all professionals, and that's where we should be making our mark. Um, Melanie, thank you so much for joining me, but tell everybody where they can get their hands on your book. Yeah, so I've still got some exclusive uh, free bonuses that come with the book. The book is available on Amazon, but if you go to linkedinunlockedbook.com, there you'll find the links to the different Amazon sites. So I've got, you know, uh, the UK, Canada, the US, whether they want a physical book or a digital Kindle book. Um, so all the links are there. And then basically after you buy that book on, on Amazon, just go back to that page and you can uh, claim those exclusive bonuses that are, are available for the launch. So you just add the name, your name and your email, as well as the Amazon receipt number, and you can download those, uh, those free bonuses as well. So that's wow. LinkedIn unlock, uh, LinkedInUnlockedBook.com. What a few extra great ideas at the end there to promote your book. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's, it, it's, it, those kind of things inspire people to take action. And I wrote this book so that people would take action, so that this book would change people's lives and businesses. And, you know, one of the things, I uh, thank you for saying that if there, if there was one investment that you should make this year to invest in my book, I appreciate you saying that. You know, I agree with that because LinkedIn is so much more powerful than people realize. And 80% of B2B leads come from, uh, that come on so, from social media 
come from LinkedIn. So that's 80% of the leads that are coming in through social media are coming in through LinkedIn. But here's the interesting thing about that. Most people use LinkedIn so poorly. And so imagine what that number could be if you actually used it properly and you used it effectively and efficiently. Melanie, amazing. Thank you so much for joining me on JSB Talks Digital. Um, I already have my copy, but I'm going to buy some more copies as gifts and giveaways for my own clients. So best of luck, continued success, and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much, Joanne. Shout outs. In this part of the show, I give shout outs to brands, organizations or individuals whose work online is remarkable and worth talking about. In this episode, I share three great LinkedIn hacks. One. To get more profile views, make sure you create your custom clickable LinkedIn profile badge. You can then add it to your website, email signature and blog. To do this, click on edit your public profile. I have it on my website, footer, and on all my inner pages. And trust me, it does bring more traffic to my LinkedIn profile. Two. To grab the attention of LinkedIn users, why not incorporate some text iconography? Now, I don't mean doing emoji overload, but just something that grabs attention in your summary. The perfect tool for this is lingojam.com forward slash fancy text generator. And I've included the link to this in the blog post associated with the podcast. A warning, however, sometimes the Unicode doesn't work on iOS or Android. So check your mobile LinkedIn profile when you add the new creative text. Three. How often have you heard social media teachers like JSB telling you to upload a professional head and shoulder shot with eyes looking down the lens of the camera as your perfect profile picture on LinkedIn? While this is great advice, and of course you should take it, did you know that you can split test two of your favorite professional headshots? Using photofeeler.com, a free online tool, this allows people vote on your headshot. Photofeeler has separate categories for business, social, and even dating, and nine traits that you can test for. In this week's Ask JSB, my question comes from avid listener and supporter, Marie Claire Baird, founder of Now Media. Hi, Joanne. Marie Claire Baird here from Now Media. My question for you about LinkedIn is Do you think it's worthwhile paying to be a member and having that higher level access? Are the benefits worth it? What benefits have you found useful? And what would you advise? Is it relevant to small SMEs or is it more for corporates? The one feature I would like to have is to see who has been looking at me. But apart from that, I'm not sure, is it worth my while investing? I'd love your advice and opinion. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Marie Claire. It's a great one. And I know it's one that I get all the time. So let me answer it. I've had a premium LinkedIn account for about 18 months. And with any paid for service, I would advise you to try before you buy. Premium has proved very useful for my own professional networking and B2B social selling efforts. And here's why. I've been able to generate relevant and warm leads and build my target audience with Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator is like a social selling platform within LinkedIn Premium. And secondly, I'm getting detailed business insights and I'm able to expand my business narrative and my storytelling with my ideal customers, again, using the premium service. Now, you have to decide if you're going to actively use the features premium offers. However, the basic service has fantastic benefits to suit all of us. So the final tip 
on premium on LinkedIn is try before you buy. Don't forget, if you have a burning social media or digital marketing question, simply click on digitaltraininginstitute.ie forward slash ask JSB and leave me a voicemail. You can also send me your questions to any of my social networks. JSB's column. In today's JSB's column, I share why LinkedIn has become my business's best social selling friend. Social selling can be an off-putting term. If like me, you take a long-term view of business. I'm cautious about aggressive sales tactics. And in fact, I'm not that good at it. I'm much better at discovering a prospect's pain points and finding a solution and sharing it with them for free. In fact, that is social selling but it's the outreach that is done differently. For me, LinkedIn has proven an invaluable tool for my business. I know you want to know why. So over the past 18 months, as I said to Marie Claire, I've been using it and here are some of the results I've had. I've built up connections with marketing professionals in my niche at home here in Ireland and also abroad. I've been able to invite them onto my podcast, onto my vlog and blog, and they've been happy to do it. And in fact, in some cases, I've reciprocated and they've given me exposure on their platforms. I've been doing outreach to find marketing pros for my new video series, which is coming soon. I've also been finding speakers for my conference, the Public Sector Digital Marketing Summit. And with my content and my new connections, I've been building my influence among them. And because I'm paying for the service, I'm forced and actually I want to use it consistently. So I'm actively building my contacts and my networks week in, week out. I've also been actively using LinkedIn Sales Navigator for the past four months. Sales Navigator allows you to perform multifaceted searches for prospects based on company size, industry, job title, and location. The deep search within Sales Navigator is called Boolean Search, and trust me, it's very powerful. It also notifies you of how you're connected to your prospects, and it shows employment trends in the industry, and also when your targets have been mentioned in the news. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is not suited for everybody. You must be able to work it and create content and to do your outreach correctly. One note of caution, if you're going to pay for it, make sure you build out your process. This has been one of my saving graces. I now have a step-by-step approach as to how I do my outreach on LinkedIn. So there you have it. It's LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's how I use the platform to help my business to connect with the right people and to start having those influential conversations. If you need help with your LinkedIn strategy, then get in touch. Simply drop me an email to joanne at digitaltraining.ie. Social media of the week. The social media tool that saved my working week this week is eLink Pro. I want to signal a word of caution about this tool. Its usefulness comes with its ability to reach out and connect with potential prospects on LinkedIn more easily. It replaces a very manual process with a more systemized one. So you start by inputting the keywords that are relevant to your business into eLink Pro and it will automatically search for the right matches for you. But please beware of over automation. It doesn't work and it feels too aggressive for the recipient. But the research phase in my experience is super useful and you can find out more at elink-pro.com. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode number 97 of JSB Talks Digital. I'm almost at the 100 mark and what a fantastic milestone, if I do say so myself. 
As always, I have everything discussed on today's show on my award-winning blog at digitaltraining.ie. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. You will get your weekly notifications from iTunes or Spotify. You'll also find us on Libsyn, Stitcher and SoundCloud. If you want to find out more about my event, the Public Sector Digital Marketing Summit, log on to publicsectormarketingpros.com forward slash summit. And if you have a question, want to be an interviewee on the podcast or have a topic that you want me to discuss, then make sure you get in touch. You can tweet me to a Tweets by JSB, post a comment on our Facebook page, Digital Training Institute. You can also send me a snap to JSB Snaps or why not send me a boomerang to JSB Grams. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke. This is JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. JSB Talks Digital. Digital.